And now, in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States, CBS Radio presents Gangbusters! <laughs> Gangbusters, the only national program that brings you authentic police case histories, has asked the Honorable Edward L. Dowd, First Assistant Circuit Attorney of St. Louis, Missouri, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. Circuit Attorney Dowd. Thank you, and good evening, Gangbusters listeners. Let's begin tonight's case on a cold winter morning a year or so ago in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. The proprietress of a small, unkempt confectionery store on South Broadway had just opened the place for the day's business and was tidying up the tiny soda fountain. Morning, Annabelle. Told you no last night, Wally. The answer's still no. Crying out loud. You think it was a fortune? You could stake a guy to a couple of hundred... Why? Now, Annabelle, be reasonable. I'm good for it. You know I'm good for it. Why well, does a guy in your position need to come looking for handouts? You know where to get it. Why don't you go out and make it? The heat's on, Annabelle. A town is hotter than a two-dollar pistol shooting blanks. Don't blame me. I didn't make the heat. These guys have really been burning up the town. Remember that clothing store man? Yeah. Them. That was them. Of course, I'm not saying it was their fault the guy got shot. Somebody comes in and heist the place. A reasonable thing to do is give them the money. He fought them, so what does he get? A nice funeral. And a hotel clerk. I hear that was them, too. So you can see why all the heat is on, Annabelle. So I, I figure to get out for a while. I'll take a ride to KC and take things easy for a couple of weeks. I should give you the 200. Have to come looking for you in Kansas City. You won't have to come looking for me, Annabelle. I'm good for it. You know I'm good for it. Then go borrow from a bank. Listen to me, Annabelle. Heart to heart. A guy with a little heat on him can't even walk in the streets in comfort anymore. The first thing he knows, he's downtown with the law nagging the life out of him. You can't work under these conditions. My heart is bleeding for you. This mob has been burning up the town with one blast after another, and the pressure is coming down on the cops from all over. It's a risk to stick your head on the street while this mob is still operating. What mob? Who are they? How should I know who are they? I thought you knew everything, Wally. I'm afraid of them. What do you say, Annabelle? No is no. Well, I'm a redhead, the papers say. You know of any redheaded heavy men around town? No. Annabelle. I got an idea, Wally. Have a chocolate malted on the house. No, no, thanks. Much obliged. My chocolate malteds aren't good enough for you, but you'll take my 200. I ain't even had breakfast yet. What's wrong with a chocolate malted for breakfast? Annabelle, please. No. We've been friends for years. I know. I want to keep it that way. If I give you the 200, that's the end of our friendship. Come in, come in. Yeah, I'm in already. Will it be, mister? Cup of coffee. Hello, Wally. Red, how are you? We don't have coffee. How about a nice cherry phosphate? Nah, never mind. A malted? No, skip it. What are you doing around here, Red? Yeah, seeing the sights. Yeah? How about a hot chocolate? That I can make you. Nah, forget it. How you been, Wally? Busy? No, not too. Uh, I was uh, told I could find you around here, Wally. He's around here too much. I've got to do something with my time. Are you uh, looking to make a connection? That depends. You like milk? I give you plain milk. I want coffee. You want coffee? You have to go elsewhere. Red? It's a good deal. Yeah, it's been good so far. Come on, let's go get that coffee someplace. We'll talk about it, huh? It's in a restaurant I'm running. If I carried what everybody asked for, I'd have a million dollars worth of stock. It's all right. I'm not to put out none. Well, go if you're going. I've got plenty to clean up around. Come on, Wally. I'll see you, Annabelle. Yeah, don't do me any favors. No, no. Police 
Department. Uh, Sergeant Rickard, robbery squad. Now, hold on, please. I'll connect you. Robbery squad, Sergeant Rickard. Miss Annabelle. Yes, Annabelle. You were looking to get a line on a redhead? Yeah, so? Maybe I just saw the one. What's his name? Red. His name is Red. Uh, that's not much help. This friend of mine was in the store crying about the heat around town because of all these heistings. Then this Red walks in. And Wally are sidekicks from way back, I think. He wants to know if Wally would like to make a connection. Well, what did Wally say? He didn't say. They left together to talk it over. Uh, for where? How should I know for where? Did I follow him? Okay, Annabelle, thanks. Keep your ears open now. In the meanwhile, we'll do some checking around. Uh, let me have a cigarette with you, Wally. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. All right, tell me. What's the deal? Wait a minute. Take it easy, I'll tell you. First, I want to know, is there any heat on you? Heat on me? Yeah. You guys got all the heat in this town. You're running wild and the lid is on everybody. Are you still a good man at the wheel you used to be, Wally? Yeah, I'm all right. Downtown, for instance. Can you wheel a car in there and get it out? Yeah. What's a touch? Jewelry house. Just jewelry? There'll be some cash involved, enough. But plenty of ice. I don't like a jewelry deal. You break your back to get the scum and you can't turn it over for 20 cents on a dollar. Well, it shouldn't make any difference if there's enough of it. No, I guess it shouldn't. And it's only a three-handed job. <laughs> oh? Yeah, that's all. A fair-sized score split up only three ways wouldn't be bad, huh? What happened to the other two in the mob? What other two? Papers have been saying you were four-handed altogether. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Wally, we were four-handed, but uh, two of the boys pulled out. Yeah? Why? They thought there was too much heat for the fireworks. They started to cry, so uh, Mac gave them the kiss off. Who's Mac? You wouldn't know him. They've been his jobs. What kind of guy is he? After this one, I'll have had enough myself. Cowboy? No, not exactly. He ain't wild. He's got a head on his shoulders. Maybe that's his trouble, too much head. He thinks he's a mastermind. I don't like that kind of deal. Every hand should have a say-so. Not with Mac, they don't. Who does this guy think he is? I don't know him. I don't know what he can do. Don't get so independent. You told me you were behind the six. You can't get dough by being independent. All right. I'll talk to him anyway. I'm talking to you for him. Are you in, aren't you? Okay, Red, I'm in. Good. Come on, let's go see this car. Take it easy, will you? Give me a chance to drink my coffee. Besides, we can't meet him till tonight. So, Matty, you have to make an appointment? He's a late sleeper. All right. Go ahead, drink your coffee. Wait out here, Johnny. Yeah, sure, Rick. I won't be but a few minutes. I'll see you. Hello, Annabelle. Ah, hello yourself, Sergeant. Now, ah, what'll it be? Oh, uh, small lemon lime. Small lemon lime to a sergeant. Where does this Wally live, Annabelle? I don't know. He never said. We've been checking around. We got no address for him in the cards. Don't cry to me, Sergeant. That's your job to keep track of these heats, not mine. You got no idea at all? No, no idea at all. And when you see him again, try to fish it out of him, huh? Fish it out of him yourself. Here he comes. Oh, one lemon lime. Hi there, Annabelle. The answer's still no, Wally. Forget I even mentioned it, Annabelle. Hi there. How are you? What'd you do? Get it from that red-headed friend of yours? Head away, yeah. Got some telephone change, Annabelle? Yep, sure. He looked familiar, that redhead. I think maybe I know him from someplace. There you are. Maybe you do. He's been around. Excuse me, I gotta make a call. Who's stopping you? See what I mean about the redhead? Yeah, I see. You gonna pick Wally up? A few days in jail might do him some good. Maybe it'd help his color. Maybe it would. How much for the lemon lime, Annabelle? Still a nickel. No inflation around here. There you are. Thank you. Call again. Let me know what you hear, Annabelle. I'm all ears. Okay, I'll see you now. Hurry back, mister. Did 
Johnny? Hey, Rick. Wasn't that Wally that went in the store? Yeah. Did he make you? No, I don't think so. He remembers me from someplace. Probably thinks I'm a steady hanger around Annabelle's. He went to use the phone. What are we going to do when he comes out? Call him? No, there's nothing we could hold him on yet. We don't even know if this redhead is one of the outfit. I wouldn't make any bets he wasn't. I want to see that redhead before we make a move. If he's right, I want to grab him good. What hey, do we do? He's coming out. Okay. Here he comes, this way. Let him pass. Okay, Johnny, stay with him. Right. If he makes a meet with a redhead or if you find out where Wally lives, check with me. Okay. All right, on your horse. So long. Back to Gangbusters in a moment. The Sunday daytime listening is truly outstanding at the star's address. Tomorrow, don't miss World Music Festivals, visiting the Edinburgh Festival, where Bruno Voltaire conducts the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. And remember, too, that Sunday daytime on most of these same CBS radio stations, Leopold Stokowski conducts in the 20th Century Concert Hall, and Michel Piastro directs the symphonette, all on CBS radio. And now back to Gangbusters and Circuit Attorney Dowd. Well, while St. Louis detectives were beginning to make headway in their investigation, the holdup mob had recruited another member. And late that night in another part of the city, Wally was being escorted up the stairs of an apartment house by his connection, Red. Like I said, Wally, you might not like the guy, but you got to grant him a brain. I just don't want anybody telling me my business, that's all. I don't go for that kind of garbage. Okay, don't get excited. You haven't even met him yet. That way. Just don't want him telling me how to do my job. Take it easy, will you? Okay, right here. Should I push the bell? Nah, never mind. I got the keys. Mac! Come on in, Wally. Yeah. Hey, Mac! In here, Red. He's in there, Wally. Say, uh, how you like the setup here, Wally, huh? That'll do. Yeah. Mac, meet Wally. How are you? Hi. Uh, just a second. <laughs> He's nuts about solitaire. So I see. I tried a lot of things. I can't find a better way to pass the time. Have you tried knitting? Wally. Yeah, I tried knitting. Nothing there. Well, you want to let this go for a while, huh? That's nice of you. It don't look like I could win it anyway, not with that deal. Sit down, Wally. Yeah. Thanks. Right here. Yeah. Fred says you're okay, Wally. Says you're a good wheel man. The best, Mac. Okay. Now, this is going to be a nice little score. Not the biggest in the world, but uh, tidy. That's the way I like them, tidy. When? Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Depends on the weather. What's the weather got to do with it? This is a congested district. If it's raining or snowing, traffic will be heavy and slow. Plus, there'll be a lot of extra taxi cabs in the area. It's a good angle. The gate will be rough enough without any handicaps, so uh, let's wait for good weather. It's okay with me. You see, Wally, all the angles. Now, uh, the mark is the Four Brothers Jewelry Company. That's... Uh, on the third floor of the tower building. It's a rough deal getting out of that neighborhood. Can you do it? I can do it. It's my idea we should have a small, fast car. A big one might be a little trouble to handle in traffic. But uh, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, you leave it to me. Hey, uh, a small car would be better, don't you think, Wally? Small car it'll be. Now, um, here's the layout. Forget about the elevator. We'll go up the stairs. The office is, um... Around here, in back, like this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there's this entrance here. Yeah. The door's made of glass, so we gotta work fast. We gotta get in, get it, and get out. We got no time to play. Who wants to play? There's a counter uh, here, which uh, stretches from one side practically to the other. It's a display case. None of the good stuff is in there. In back of the counter is a vault. That's what we want to get in. How much do you figure? Maybe five, six thousand in cash, maybe fifty thousand in ice. It's not bad. It's all right for me. Off to the side here, uh, 
There's a little office. Uh -huh. Now, that's where the owner has his desk. And besides the owner, we'll find another guy there, a salesman. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them looked like the hero type. We won't have any trouble. You got this mark pretty well cased. I should have. I've been there twice. I've been trying to make up my mind whether to buy a watch they got. It's a great setup, Wally. Huh? They'll recognize me when I come in. I'll tell them I want the watch. They're relaxed. We go to work. How about the bug? All those jewelry houses got alarms. That won't be no problem. The only one I could spot was in the boss's little office. Now, he'll be in front writing up the sale on the watch. And if there are any more, we'll just have to be quick enough to keep them away from them. I'm for being quick. Back to gangbusters in a moment. Now, uh, Red. Yeah. You're going to take the boss. Uh -huh. Your job is to watch him, keep him quiet, keep him away from the bugs. Okay. And Wally, you do the same thing with the salesman, and I'll clean the void. Wait a minute. Miss Miller. You're going a little fast for me. You said I was to handle a salesman. That's right. I was under the impression I was a wheel man in this deal. That's a big enough job. I don't belong on the inside at all. It's not necessary to stay with the car. It can sit. Yeah. Well, it can sit without me. I don't do two men's work. Wally. Not without two men's cuts. I don't do two men's work without two men's cuts. Will you listen to me? I knew there was something screwy about this deal. No wonder your other two left you like that. Wally, you got to grant me it takes three on the inside. Okay, I'll grant you, but I'm a wheel man. You've done inside work? Sure, I've done inside work, but not while I was the wheel man. I won't have any part of it. Now, listen to me, will you? You came in, and you're in. Yeah. We'll see if I'm in. Now, Wally, be reasonable. Who's being unreasonable? Now, look. I don't get tough often, but I'm going to get tough now. You're in, Wally. You made a deal and you're in. Well, you're not going to be feeling so good. Wally, cooperate, huh? It ain't going to be so tough. Well, okay. If I wasn't on such a spot for door, I'd tell you all what to do. Good, Wally. I knew you'd come to first. You see, Mac? Is that all? Yeah, that's all. If this is going to be tomorrow, I'd better start scouting around for a car for the get. Yeah, a small car, Wally. A small car. Red will get in touch with you. He'll let you know whether it's tomorrow and what time. Yeah, you'll be at Annabelle's at 11. I'll phone there. Okay, Annabelle's at 11. I'll be there. Now, we got a good deal, boys. An awful good deal. Now, let's see if I can win one of these games for myself. Robbery squad, Sergeant Rickard. Hello, Rick. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Wally must have lifted himself a Chevy coach. I saw him on the corner of Grand and Locust. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Looks for sure like he's in a deal now. Yeah? Where'd he park this car? In a public garage on Market Street. On Market Street near the civil courts. Okay, Johnny, stick around there. I'll be right out. You think I ought to have one of the boys stay behind, Wally? No, that won't be necessary. He's going to use that car if they pull anything. That's all we have to watch the car. I'll be right there. Uh, what? Yeah, the... Hi, Annabelle. Oh, Wally. Hot tricks, Annabelle. I've got no tricks. What do you want? 200 again? The answer's still no. Nah, I don't want you 200. Just fix me a chocolate marlin. Chocolate marlin with vanilla, chocolate marlin with chocolate? With vanilla. Chocolate marlin with vanilla. How come yesterday you wanted 200, today you don't? I'm beginning to get insulted. My connections came through, Annabelle. You would take my advice, which you won't. You wouldn't go looking for trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. Who needs trouble? Oh, every time I got a call. I'll get it, Annabelle. Why should you get it? Is it your store? I'm expecting a call. I'll answer. Uh, go on, then. I answer before they hang up. Yeah. And don't give my phone number to any more Toms and Dicks. What do you think this is? Hello? Wally? Yeah, this is Wally. Red. Max says we do it today, 3 o'clock. Okay, I'm ready. You got the car okay? Yeah, Chevy, just the ticket. I got a park in the garage on Market Street. I can pick you two up about 2.30. Now, Max says no. Max says for you to drive downtown yourself, park the car in Del Mar near the building. We'll see you there. Okay. It will take care of the hardware. Just bring the car and yourself. I got you. So long. Much obliged, Annabelle. Mm, much obliged for what? For you, sir. The facilities. Anytime. Ask me for anything except money. One chocolate malted with vanilla. Happy days, Annabelle. Happy days yourself. Washington, Rick. Maybe we can pick him up there. 
Well, I'm afraid it's no use, Johnny. We lost them. Lousy traffic. Same thing last night. The cincherette took them to meet the mob. We got fouled up in traffic. That's okay. We know where to put our hands on them now. Wally, at least. He can lead us to the others. They're liable to start shooting again. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, from the way he was headed, I guess the job is someplace downtown. Maybe he was just headed to pick up the others. Maybe, but these guys are pretty slick, Johnny. Yeah. I don't think they'd all ride together in a hot car. I think the rest will meet him. I'll pull in the phone. We'll get a few more squads on the job and cruise around downtown. Maybe we can spot that Chevy. All right, step lively, boys. We go in, we get in, we get out. Waste no time. You said red. I'm set. Wally? I'm set. Okay, each of you handle your man. I'll clean the ball. Keep your eyes open. This is the place, boys. Looks nice. Yeah. Hello there. Well, how are you today? Hmm? Fine. I uh, think I'll take that watch I was looking at. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, that's a fine watch. I brought my friends over to see it. All right. Here we are. Solid gold case, 21 jewel Swiss movement, a beauty and a bargain. How do you like it? Yeah, it's well. I kind of like one myself. I can show you something similar. Uh, some other time. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to put a deposit on it and pick it up next Monday. I'm uh, kind of short. Uh, how much of a deposit did you have in mind? Oh, say, $25? Well, I uh, think that'd be all right. Let me check with the boss. Uh, Mr. Burgess. Uh, some watch, all right. Yes. Uh, front, please, Mr. Burgess. All right. Watch is guaranteed, isn't it? Absolutely guaranteed. If anything goes wrong with it, just bring it in. But you must remember, a uh, fine watch is a delicate piece of machinery. Yeah, I know. Yes. <clears throat> May I help you? Uh, Mr. Burgess, this gentleman would like to leave a $25 deposit on the watch and pick it up on Monday. How do you do? Hello. Hi, nice place you got here. Thanks. Well, I think that'll be perfectly all right. All we have to okay. do is... Okay. Do as you're told and you won't get hurt. Well, please, what's that? Quiet still. All right. Lock the door. Yeah, I got you. Go on around, boys. Keep them covered. Yeah, come on. Now, just don't try to be heroes and you won't get hurt. All we want... Hey, you. Me? You, move away from there. Yes, so, all right. Hey, boss. Come here and have a look. What's the trouble? We gotta move. There's a bug right under the counter. This guy was standing not six inches from it. You? Oh, no. no not me. Go on, you. Move over there. All right. All right. I'm moving. You. Did you hit the alarm button? Oh, I know. I didn't touch it. Are you sure? I'm positive. Sure had his chance. Now, tell me the truth. If any cops come storming in here, I'm gonna kill you, I swear. Did you hit that bug? No, I didn't. Okay, you're smart. All right, boys, get them tied up. By the time you finish, I'll have the vault clean. We covered a lot of blocks, Rick. Don't look good to me. Well, we take one more turn around it. Wait a minute. What? There's a Chevy parked up there. Where? Next to the alley. That's the baby. Nobody with it, huh? It must be inside someplace. Hold it, John. Hold it. Central District, cars four, five, and six. In the jewelry office, third floor, tower building. The old up alarm is ringing. That's it. Let's go. In the jewelry office, third floor, tower building. That's in the middle of the block. Let's get them. How you doing, boys? They'll be tied in a minute. I don't know what you fellas expect to get. Shut up. Make it good and tight. Yeah. Hey, look, there's cops coming in the hall. Why, you, you hit that bug, didn't you? Please, get up. Here they come. Get up. Go on, get up. All right. Open up there. Yell to him. You hit the alarm by mistake. We're police officers, open up. Tell him what customers. Tell him it was a mistake. Take it in. Hey, they're breaking in. Watch it. The lock. Get the lock, Sergeant. Get your hands up, coppers, or I'll kill this guy. No, don't. Stop those guns, police officers. Get them, Sergeant. Let go of me. Give me that gun. Let me go, oh, coppers. Right. Get your hands up. Okay, don't shoot. Get those hands up. All right, don't shoot. Get them up. You, turn that man loose. I'll kill him. No. Let him go. All right, take it easy. You all right, mister? Yes. Yes, I think so. Jack is tied up over there. Go look after him. Yes, I'd better. It's all right, Jack. It's all right. Are any of you bums hurt? They all look okay to me, Rick. Now, sit down there, all of you. Listen. He said sit down. What a mess. I don't cry. It won't do you any good, Wally. Sure, plenty of truth in that. And now we're going to take a little inventory. Let's see what we got here. They're not such a tough-looking bunch, are they, Rick? No, not now they're not. Take their guns away and they're just a bunch of crumbs. Just plain crumbs. 
Well, that, gangbusters listeners, was how this gang of hold-up artists and killers was captured in the act of committing a robbery after a terrific struggle and gun battle. All were tried in the circuit court at St. Louis, Missouri, and convicted. They are now in the Missouri State Penitentiary at Jefferson City in execution of their sentences. Thank you, Circuit Attorney Edward L. Dowd of St. Louis, Missouri. Now, Gangbusters Nationwide Clue is broadcast every week as a public service to assist American police in their war against the underworld. <laughs> Attention all citizens. Be on the lookout for Clarence Dye, wanted by the FBI for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution for armed robbery. Listen carefully to his official description. Clarence Dye, alias Jacques, age 43. Five feet, ten inches, 140 pounds, medium build, brown hair, blue eyes, fair complexion, may seek work as a welder or cook. This man has scars over his left eyebrow, a blue scar over his right eyebrow, and a tattoo of initials C.D. on his right forearm. Caution, Dye is probably armed and should be considered extremely dangerous. He reportedly has stated that he will not be taken into custody alive and will attempt to kill any officer arresting him. <laughs> Attention all citizens, maintain vigilance for Edwin Sanford Garrison. Wanted by the FBI for unlawful flight to avoid confinement for the crimes of burglary and robbery. If you have any information concerning these fugitives, notify your local police, the nearest office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or gangbusters at once. Tonight's gangbusters case was dramatized by Stanley Niss and directed by Leonard L. Bass, with Mason Adams, Amzie Strickland, and Eric Dressler in leading roles. The entire production was supervised for CBS Radio by John Ives, Gaylord Avery speaking. Tomorrow night, Eve Arden wraps for attention, and the merriment's on again at dear old Madison High. Yes, she's back. Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks. Funnier than ever before, with the help of Bashful Boynton, her biology-teaching heartthrob, Mrs. Davis, Eve's pixelated landlady, Osgood Conklin, the terrible-tempered principal, and the rest of the riotous gang. Remember, class convenes with our Miss Brooks tomorrow night on most of these same CBS radio stations. Be sure to beat the school bell to your seats. You hear America's favorite shows on the CBS Radio Network.